We're here at AUSA 2019, and I'm speaking with Anthony Picknell, Director of Defence, FCA. Anthony, um, we're standing beside an example of Jeep Gladiator, uh, a militarised Jeep Gladiator. Could you tell us a little bit about that product and its and its legacy through the, the Fiat Chrysler range? Certainly. Uh, the Jeep Gladiator is the newest uh, addition to our, our uh, Wrangler or our, our Jeep products. Um, and part of that uh, goes back to the heritage and our, where we've come from. We started obviously with the Willys Jeep and we've been through several iterations of, of Wrangler and we're now at the, the latest version, the Gladiator. And, and you say various iterations of Wrangler. Uh, the, the current one would be uh, JL, if, I, if I'm correct. Um, what's the designation for Gladiator? Well, the designation of the Gladiator is G, uh, JT, so it comes from the truck part of it. Um, uh, but it goes back, the Gladiator name goes back several, several years, back to the 19, end of the 1960s, when we had a Gladiator that was part of it. The different uh, nomenclatures that we have for the vehicles, they range from, um, we started I think with the Willys and then I think everybody's aware of the Willys. And then we had CJs that went into military service. There's been 30,000 vehicles that went into military service in total. Um, and we then had the TJL, which was a vehicle that was built in Egypt under a, in a joint venture. And then a J8 that came in, which was based on the JK. The JK was the predecessor for the JL, which is now the latest Wrangler, and this is the JT, which is uh, um, based also on the on the JT on the JL. Sorry. Uh, so the JA, which, which most people will be quite familiar with, was based on the JK. So, so technically, the the J8 as a product is no more. That's correct. So when the the end of the JK, um, or when the JK model came to an end, we moved on to the JL, and at that point it was decided that the J8 would not continue in the format that it was. Uh, it was only ever produced in Egypt under a joint venture, and then after that we've now working with um, other companies to produce something off off the JT and the JLs. Uh, and the, and uh, sticking with the J8 for now, if I may, that that was available through uh, through upfitters, modified, improved from the base Wrangler platform. How does this latest militarisation compare to the J8, or how might it compare in the future? Well, both are exactly the same. The model is, hasn't changed at all. So the idea is we we produce a base vehicle, a COTS, a real COTS vehicle. So as that's the base vehicle, we then supply that or sell that to, to upfitters who then upfit the vehicle and provide it to the military. So in this case, this will be no different. It will be, we will produce a base vehicle and then it will be supplied through selected upfitters for sale to end customers. Uh, and you mentioned uh, Egypt. Now that would be Arab American vehicles? That's correct. We had a joint venture and we still have that joint venture. We produce vehicles over there, but not the military vehicle and not the J8 anymore. So they're purely for the Egyptian market. Uh, and, and we're here with AM General at the moment, and, and this particular product is going to be offered by AM General. Um, how did that relationship formulate um, and, and what do you see the future for it? Well, as I said, we've always, we're always still using the idea of upfitters and people to sell the product into the military sector. We are, a, we are a completely commercial retail company, FCA, and I'm responsible for the military part of it, but we sell base vehicles. So we're always looking for upfitters, capable upfitters, to modify our vehicle and sell to end customers. And so the, the work that we're doing with AM General was exactly that. Um, we chose, they came to us, we worked together, and we were looking for a vehicle that they could use, upfit, and sell to uh, the global market for military purposes. And, and this vehicle we're standing beside, in terms of modification, what has been done to it that, that's not stock, basically? This vehicle has had, um, AM General has done a great job. What we were trying to do is we were trying to ensure that people understand this is a COTS vehicle because that is what a lot of companies are looking for, a lot of countries, sorry, are looking for, a lot of governments are looking for. And AM General did a great job of showing what we potentially could do to this vehicle to make it as military as you want, or we could keep it down at the base level. Remember, this vehicle is incredibly capable. Um, from a towing capacity of 7,000 pounds to um, the payload that we can put on it, this vehicle in its starting point is, so, is, 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 is capable and reliable and the vehicle that we can use in the militaries. What AM General can now do is take that base vehicle 
and step it up into meet the mission profiles that countries all around the world need. And so some of the stuff that they did on it was they looked at the seats, so they provided different seats in the vehicle, they put in a command screen on it, um, and they make some, some minor changes to the vehicle. As a stock vehicle, as a base vehicle, they haven't changed, so much of what they've changed is on the exterior part of it. And, and, and this particular platform, this is the, the Jeep Gladiator, which, which in commercial terms is, is a, a crew cab with, with a, a, a pickup rear body. Um, what are the options moving forward for, for militarization of what we would call the base, the JL, which is without that rear body on the back? I think I think for the for the perp, for if we look at the North American market or the American market and a lot of the the larger armies, this is the vehicle. I mean, it's a much bigger vehicle. It's capable of the. It's got the payload and it's got space. However, when we start looking across Europe and we look at the smaller countries, this vehicle is a large vehicle, and so there are there'll still be probably opportunities to use the Wrangler, um, in other in other areas where perhaps this vehicle is too big or there is a specific requirement for something different. So they're not mutually exclusive in any way shape or form so there's still a possibility for wranglers but we think this will become the base the base vehicle for most militaries worldwide using am general as the as our partner to do it excellent thank you